Good morning. Hi, everyone. Right, um, this is my haul video for um, Tuesday morning. Uh, I went to the car boot on Sunday, had a fantastic day, uh, picked up a load of stuff, had to do two trips back to the car uh, for the first time since I've ever started doing this, uh, which is great. Um, I went along there with my mate, and we had a grand old time, to be honest. Uh, got there nice and early, which I don't usually do. Well, early for me is like nine o'clock, so yeah. Um, but I still do okay. So I'm just going to quickly go through now, show you what I picked up. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll go quickly over the, the boring stuff and there's some quite interesting stuff here, really good range, diverse things that I never really sort of think to look at. And a couple of good pickups yesterday from Facebook as well, which I'm quickly going to show you. Okay, um, pick that up, printer ink, Canon, pay £2 for it, thinking, yeah, okay, I'm going to get quite a bit back, it's new and sealed. I've uh, got it home, it's probably only worth about four or five pounds, sealed even. Um, so I don't know why I'm going to have to research these a bit better really because I just sort of presume that anything um, Canon or Lexmark or Epson might be of value, but obviously not. So not, no worries. Um, then from one, one other stall, a uh, really cool guy actually. Had a load of old um, vintage games. That's uh, an Amstrad game and that's a Spectrum game. Now, unusually, they're both sealed. I've looked into them, and there's not a lot in them. Only two, three quid each. I think I paid a pound each for them. Um, there's not a huge market for the 8-bit stuff. Commodore 64, Spectrum, Amstrad. Unless it's really well sought after um, game makers, such as Ultimate, who then went on to become Rare. And there's a few other Sagnosis stuff's really collectible. Um, to be honest, I just love the cover on that. Look at it. They, they, they don't make video game art like that anymore. Some of the Psygnosis stuff, especially on Amiga and Atari, the big box stuff, a lot of it was done by really famous um, sci fi fantasy artists like Roger Dean. And some of the artwork is just incredible, like stuff on Shadow of the Beast and Blood Money. So there's a really huge market there for people, I think, who just buy the big box 16 bit stuff just on the basis of the artwork on it. I haven't got any examples of it, but um, I'll try and show you in a later video the kind of things I mean. So yeah, they're a, they a nice pickup. Um, uh, DVDs, didn't pay more than a pound for any of these. I got Ratatouille, two disc special edition. Probably get about three quid on that. This I'm going to hold on to until there's a, a, a new sequel to it coming out. It's National Lampoon's Vacation. It's the collection of all four films. It's basically new. Um, I paid two pounds for that. Um, I should get £8 on it. Uh, so, yeah, pleased with that. Got a Microsoft uh, Flight Simulator Combat Thingummy. I paid 50p for it, and it, it's not as much on that as I thought it might be. It's in really good condition, but it's, it's pretty much new condition. Um, it might get 24 quid. So, these are what I'm going to do in these smaller sales. Um, I'm going to have sort of two tiers to my eBay. I'm going to have a load of stuff on 30 days just in the background chugging away all those sort of media, like up to the value of a tenner, anything more interesting, uh, I'm going to have on a seven or a ten day auction to try and drum up interest a little bit, uh, rather than just have it sort of going on in the background. Uh, another Simpsons hit and run, uh, I should get a five back for that. I've got a really cool Rubik's Pyramid Puzzle, that was 50p. They go for between five and seven pound, so really interesting. I might keep hold of it and do it as a bundle with two or three different ones. Uh, I have got my Rubik's Magics listed on eBay at the moment. I've got that on for 25 quid. There's quite a lot of interest in that, so we'll see how that goes. I picked up this really unusual... Uh, it's, it's awesome, actually. It's a Batman and Star Trek crossover story, but it's on 7-inch record on vinyl, or wax, or whatever you want to call it. It's in quite good condition, but... How awesome is that cover? I mean, that would look great just framed up on someone's wall, I think. Uh, that was 50p. That uh, was really, really cool. I've never seen anything like that. Um, There's none on eBay, none on Amazon. I had to go onto Discogs, which is like a specialised record and uh, CD seller, to, to find something similar. I think it's worth about that 8 to £10, pound, but you know, there's part of me that might keep that, because I just think it's really smart. It's got like a little foil thingy on there as well. Uh, yeah, so that was good. Uh, there's a store selling a load of books, photography books, which are always kind of good to look at. Quickly scanned them in. Most of them are scanning in at a penny. Uh, that one was scanning in at seven quid. Uh, paid a pound for it. So I'll probably put that on Amazon as opposed to eBay. 
and hope to get between six and seven for it. Um, the guy that I bought those 8-bit games off have this uh, Star Ocean, uh, which is a really famous um, second tier, really, uh, Japanese RPG. You've got your Final Fantasies and your Dragon Quest, then under that you've got the likes of Star Ocean um, and the Tales series and things like that. So this is a nice little bit of uh, point of sale stuff, promo things that from when the last game came out. Don't know if it's worth anything, can't find anything similar. But what I might do is keep hold of it for if I ever pick up the game itself uh, on Xbox 360 or PS3, bundle that in with it. And maybe if I can get all of the strategy guide and do like a really nice bundle and I'll sort of add value to it and just sort of set my list in above other people selling it. So, yeah. Uh, from the same person that I got that awesome um, Batman record from, I got a Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles book. Now, if you can see, that's that's from the 80s, late 80s, early 90s, because we were we called it in this country Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. We couldn't use the word ninja on TV, on the kids' TV. Uh, any of you of a certain age will seem to remember they could never show nunchucks or anything like that. All the Bruce Lee films were, were censored and banned for, for years because, well, not necessarily banned, but because of the whole nunchucks thing. And they, the, the BBFC have since sort of relaxed that a lot. But, yeah, we, we couldn't call the turtles... Ninja Turtles, so hence they were Hero Turtles. So yeah, that was that. Got that. That was 50p. Um, might get three, three or four quid for that. Cool little book. And dropped Doctor Bollock with this one really. So I only paid 50p for it, so it, it's not you know huge loss. But um, the fantasy art book by an artist called Boris Vallejo is very sort of famous, classical. Oh, in fact, how strange is that? I've just seen in there he's done the artwork for the National Lampoon's cover. Which is a nice bit of synchronicity. Where is it? Like that. Actually, his art looks amazing. I actually own this book myself, but it's only going for a penny on Amazon. Oh, there we go. There he is, Clark Griswold. Yeah, a bit of a National Lampoon's theme pool video today, which is strange. So, yeah, um, I might just sell that for a couple of quid and hopefully someone will see it and get a click with them. Picked up a few of these monkeys. Had a great bit of banter with the guy selling them. And I think they were 50 pence each. Uh, the Peaky Tips Monkeys, always always a good pickup. A couple of them are Christmas ones, so I'm going to keep hold of them until Christmas and then hopefully get a bit more money for them. Go for between five and ten pound mark. They're in good condition. Um, a normal one as well. Cats in the background, cash in the purse. Um, I might do a bundle. I've got a couple of little mini ones, so I might put the put him with like the little mini one and do them as a as a set. Uh, what else did I get? I got this funky little mug. Mugs are always good. Didn't know that. There's, there's quite a lot, quite a collector's market in strange and unusual and quirky mugs. You'd never have thought about that for a million years. In a million years. Let me open it and I can show you. It's like, um, the guy told me it's from, a, I've had a look actually, there's a website called Retro GT. Uh, and they do all like kind of video game themed um, t-shirts and things like that. Some really cool stuff on there. Uh, and I got this. It's not on eBay because I'll look for it, but it's uh, like a sort of uh, pixel art mug. It's called um, Pixel Penguins. So that was 50p. Uh, it's, it's new, it's in its box. Um, they're selling that on the website still for 6 99 So I might stick it on eBay for a fiver and see if it goes. Uh, or I might just keep it for myself because I love stuff like that. Um, some woman was selling a load of Disney toys. So they're all bagged. I got that seller there from Toy Story 3, I think he was. He was £1.50. Uh, I think he's called Sticky the Octopus. Really good condition. Uh, that sh he should go for between £5 and £10. And then a huge bag full of Monsters Inc. Not Monsters University. A load of Monsters Inc. figures there. We've got the um, Randall and Mike and a couple of the workers. And uh, the woman who works on the front desk, who I can't remember her name. And, and the main bad guy. Um, so that was three pounds for that bag, so I hope to get between ten and fifteen for them. They're all in great condition. And then this is a strange one. Uh, it's Captain Hook figure from Peter Pan. Don't know if you can see. And then it comes came with that, and that was one pound fifty for the, for the pair. So I googled, I looked for Peter Pan octopus. I pressed the button. I'll quickly show you. Yeah. Right there he is. He clicked. 
he makes the TikTok sound, and there's a little torch right in the middle there, as you can see, that lights up there. So I did a little bit more research, and it's not actually, well it is from Peter Pan obviously because it's a crocodile, but it's from a kids TV show called Jake and the Neverland Pirates. Now my daughter's 10 now, so she kind of missed that. Um, it's, it's been a lot more popular in more recent years, but that new is selling for about 30 quid just for that, for him. So I'm going to probably stick him on 15 um, and see if there's any interest on him. He's, he's quite cool, really chunky and yeah, good toy. So, But yeah, he wasn't listed as Peter Pan Crocodile. It was down as Jake and the Neverland Pirates. So yeah, always kind of just be aware that it might not necessarily be in the, in the category that you're looking for. So yeah, what else? Uh, I got a an anime DVD, and um, for those of you who still aren't sure, um, anime is Japanese cartoons, manga is Japanese comics. So, but what what the confusion was in this country, there was in the late 80s and early 90s, there was a company called Manga in Britain that started bringing the films over here to this country and and um, with dubs and re and releasing them. You know, Kira, Ghost in the Shell, Wicked City. Um, Rotsuki Doji, all those kind of things. Uh, back when I was a teenager, it was like, oh my god, these are the most amazing things I've ever seen. So everyone started calling them manga because that it says on the back of their manga video, but it's not. These these are known as anime anime films. The comics that they're based on, the Japanese, don't call them comics. They're called manga. That's the written the written stories. So I've got that. That's uh, generally regarded as a masterpiece in the genre. Perfect Blue. It's like this whole study on celebrity and fame and really inspired films like The Matrix and things like that and Inception um, massively inspired by, by, by these kind of things amazing amazing film there's not a huge lot of value in it I picked it up because it was 50p and I, it was just a shame to lose something so unusual there really because you don't see these kind of things in car boot sales um, picked up um, Grand Theft Auto by City paid a pound for that because I've got a strategy guide for it that I've had for ages so I'm going to bundle it with that and hopefully get rid of it that way uh, nearly done I picked up <laughs> these things I don't know what they are uh, I'm quite good with my 80s toys and things but I, 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 I knew they were unusual so they are these funny little figures if anyone can sort of let me know what, they, what they're from they're from 1986 Hasbro um, there's like an elephant dude and an eagle it was just the two of them they were 10 pence each so I thought they've got to be worth it for 10 pence so oh no Takara 1986 Takara are the Japanese brand that basically made most of the Transformers and they were imported by Hasbro and uh, there's a whole long history um, with that. Um, he's yeah, it's from the same range. So yeah, quite cool. A bit, I'll do a bit of digging and find out what they're from and I'll let you know. Uh, I've got this thing, more as a laugh more than anything. It's Because uh, I quite like the cover, it's, it's quite nice. It's a, a kid's shampoo eye shield that you put over your hair and you look ridiculous. But I, I really like the packaging. It's like sort of authentic 1950s um, advertising. I love that. It's a shame it's a bit manky because again that would look great as a piece of wall art. But it, the cover's a bit manky, and inside the thing itself is absolutely ridiculous. Um, and I, I could wear it, but yeah, okay, right there. That, that, that happened. <laughs> so yeah, that's. I don't know that there's anybody in that. I can't find one on eBay. I might just end up taking that to the charity shop. Um, nearly there. I'm going to say best thing for last. I got this. Um, this this is the last but one item I got. It's a Monopoly electronic banking. You'll see what that is. Um, that I paid £1.54. I've checked it's all there. Make sure you check these, obviously, because if it hasn't got the uh, the card reader for it, then it's pretty much worthless, and you just have to part out the set the you know the sets for it. So that should get between fifteen and twenty pound. It's in it's in new condition. It's in amazing condition. So yeah, sh that should go well. Got a little scanner with it. Six credit cards. So yeah, that that should be good fun. And yeah, this was the last thing I got. It was a really good haul actually. Um, I got that. Now this is from the Harry Potter films, the Monster Book of Monsters. Uh, it's a bit of a be on the lookout for actually. They're going for between twenty and thirty pound on eBay. Now, I paid a fiver for that. He wanted a tenner, but it was quick enough to knock down for a fiver. So yeah, I was pleased with that. Now what he actually does? <laughs> how cool is that? So the touch centers on the back, and you can program a code. So you can you stroke the back of the book in a certain way, like up, down, left, up, down, and then it opens. So I'll show you how to do it. Here we go. One, two, three. 
and then you can open it up and it's a little treasure box. But if you try doing it in a different way, it won't open. So yeah, so really pleased with that. So I'm hoping to get 30 quid on that. Um, so that were my car boot hauls. And then just quickly, I had some amazing pickups yesterday from Facebook. My local local selling page on Facebook has got over 20,000 members in there. So there's always stuff going on there. Like every few minutes, there's, there must be half a dozen new items being listed. So it's always worth checking and rechecking it. So I got these. Um, I paid £3 for this. Uh, it's a Terminator 2 um, Arnold Pescadero Escape T800 figure. That's going for between 20 and £30. So yeah, I was pleased with that for three quid. That's sealed, never taken out of its box. But this fella here should do really, really well. It's made by Medco, a really, really well-regarded manufacturer of toys. Um, it's a um, Nightmare on Elm Street set from the first film. He's got like an alternative head and hand and, and does all these things. It, it's in its box. It's been open, but it's been open really sympathetically. It's just like one slip down there. So I can't sell it as new, but I can sell it as mint in box. Um, because the character, yeah, so there's no doubt. I mean, needs a bit of a dust. Now this, I think this will get me anything between 40 and 60 pounds. That's five pounds that was. Um, now there's, there's one, I found a similar one on Amazon for 160 pounds. I don't expect to get that for a million years and it's just ridiculous. But yeah, I, I think I should definitely get between 40 and 60 for that. So that was a really good pickup. And the very last thing, just quickly, this is just to show you how thinking outside of your comfort zone may help you. It's something that just caught my eye. Someone lifted it. Eight pounds. <laughs> you ready? I got laughed at by my girlfriend buying this because she says, what the hell are you doing buying things like that? And I showed her the complete listing prices and she was like, all right, okay. And the taps, the gold taps. Um, so there's, there's four, there's two sink ones two bath ones, um, plug plug holes and the plugs as well. I've had a look into these because I couldn't tell on the, on the photograph whether they were brass or what. And now there's a huge market for them on eBay, absolutely amazing. From what I've seen there, just for each set of taps I should get about £40 for. So, you know, call it 80 quid, so maybe another 10, 15 quid for the plugs and things. I've got £100 worth of stuff there for £8. Absolutely amazing. So really pleased with that. Um, so yeah, there we go. I've got some things to post today. Uh, I've started using Hermes for my large postings. I've got um, a Lego uh, Avengers Quinjet set to post. Um, a couple of other smaller items. And, and yeah, so I'll do another update video later in the week for my eBay sales. Let you know how that's been going. I'm only going to do one of them. My eBay sales are very slow at the moment because I'm still trying to post, get more and more stuff on there. So I'm just sort of drip feeding it really. And a lot of the stuff's just there in the background. The good items are selling as I thought they would. The smaller stuff, not so much, which is fine. So I'm only going to probably do an eBay um, sales video probably once every two, three weeks and just let you know how that's going. Um, so yeah, it's my, it's my day off today. So I'm going to hit some more shops in a bit and hopefully pick up some more cool stuff. Uh, and yeah, thanks to everyone for watching. I got recognised at the car boot. I can't believe it. I've only been doing this a few weeks. Um, so some woman came up to me and she goes, um, oh, uh, she looked a bit nervous. I was with my mate and she said, oh, are you Jason? I'm like, yeah. She goes, oh, I watch your YouTube videos. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, uh, this is kind of awkward. And I just didn't know what to say. So I was like, oh, thanks for that. You know, enjoy it. And, you know, and she started talking about some other son's Lego that she had and she, you know, but, but whatever. But yeah, so that, that was quite nice in, in a weird way. I'm used to it because I run a pub. Um, obviously, I see loads of people on a daily basis. You know, we're a very, very, very busy place, so we've got hundreds of customers. And, um, you know, so I do get sort of spotted a lot when I'm out. A lot of people say hi and things. So it's just one of those things. But, yeah, didn't didn't expect that <laughs> internet fame. So, yeah, I um, hope you all have a, have a fantastic day. And I will do another video very shortly. Okay, thanks, guys. Bye.